In this video, we'll uncover the true stories behind the deaths of five iconic figures from the Wild West. So, who were these legendary figures, and how did they meet their fate? Let's delve into the gripping tales of their final moments. Number 1. Wild Bill Hickok Wild Bill Hickok, the legendary gunslinger of the Wild West, met his demise in a way that befit his reputation for being quick on the draw. It was a fateful day in 1876 when he found himself in a Deadwood saloon, engrossed in a poker game. Little did he know that this would be the last hand he'd ever play. As the poker chips clinked and the tension in the room thickened, a man named Jack McCall quietly entered the saloon. McCall had been nursing a grudge against Hickok, stemming from a previous dispute where Hickok had reportedly killed McCall's brother in self-defense. The sight of Hickok, seated with his back to the door, presented an opportunity McCall couldn't resist. Without a word, McCall drew his revolver and, with a single deadly shot, ended the life of Wild Bill Hickok. The bullet struck Hickok in the back of the head, a shocking betrayal that left everyone in the saloon stunned. Hickok, known for his lightning-fast reflexes, had no chance to react. He slumped forward, his card slipping from his lifeless hand, and the poker game he was so engrossed in came to an abrupt and tragic end. The killing of Wild Bill Hickok by Jack McCall remains one of the most infamous moments in Wild West history. It serves as a stark reminder that even the quickest gunslinger can be taken down by the element of surprise and a personal vendetta. In the annals of the Wild West, this event stands as a testament to the unpredictable and often brutal nature of life in those times. It's a story that continues to captivate and intrigue, immortalizing Wild Bill Hickok as a true icon of the American frontier, whose life ended in a way that mirrored the very essence of the Wild West itself, a place where danger lurked around every corner and where the line between life and death was often drawn in the blink of an eye. Number two. Billy the Kid Billy the Kid, also known as William Henry Bonney, was one of the most infamous outlaws of the Wild West. His life was marked by violence, crime, and a reputation as a ruthless gunslinger. However, his end came not in a blaze of gunfire during a dramatic showdown, but in a rather anticlimactic manner. In 1881, Billy the Kid was in New Mexico, where he had become embroiled in a series of conflicts and disputes. Sheriff Pat Garrett, a former friend turned lawman, was determined to bring him to justice. Garrett managed to track down Billy and his gang to Fort Sumner. Now here's where it gets interesting. The story goes that on the night of Jolie 14, 1881, Billy the Kid was at a friend's house, a man named Pete Maxwell, in Fort Sumner. Billy was in the dark bedroom, speaking with Maxwell about a variety of topics. Garrett, the lawman, was also in the house that night. As the legend goes, Garrett, who was familiar with Billy's voice, recognized him in the darkened room. According to some accounts, there was a brief exchange of words. Garrett, aiming to apprehend the notorious outlaw, fired his gun. The bullet struck Billy the Kid in the chest, mortally wounding him. Billy the Kid, the infamous outlaw who had eluded capture for years, died in that dimly lit room on that fateful night. His death was a sudden and unexpected end to his notorious criminal career. It's a tale of betrayal, as Garrett had once been a part of Billy's gang, but had chosen to uphold the law instead. Now, here's my take on it. Billy the Kid's death is a vivid illustration of the Wild West's harsh reality. It's a reminder that not all legendary figures of that era met their end in dramatic shootouts or epic showdowns. In Billy's case, it was a single, almost mundane gunshot in a dark room that brought his life of crime to a close. It's also a testament to the complex and often ambiguous nature of justice in those times. Pat Garrett, who was once a comrade of Billy's, became the instrument of his demise. It's a tale of shifting loyalties, moral choices, and the relentless pursuit of what was considered right. In the end, Billy the Kid's death serves as a poignant chapter in the larger narrative of the Wild West. A time when lawlessness clashed with the relentless pursuit of justice, often with fatal consequences. Number 3. Calamity Jane Calamity Jane, one of the most iconic figures of the Wild West, met her end in a way that might surprise many. While we often associate the Wild West with gunfights, showdowns, and dramatic confrontations, 
Calamity Jane's death was a reminder that even the wildest figures of the West were vulnerable to common ailments. Calamity Jane, born Martha Jane Canary in 1852, was renowned for her sharpshooting skills, her fearless spirit, and her adventurous life. She was a frontierswoman, a scout, and a friend to the likes of Wild Bill Hickok and Buffalo Bill Cody. Her life was filled with daring escapades, but it was a silent and relentless killer that eventually claimed her life. In 1903, at the age of 51, Calamity Jane succumbed to pneumonia. Pneumonia, an infection that inflames the air sacs in one or both lungs, can be a deadly disease, especially in an era when medical treatments were far less advanced than today. It's believed that her heavy drinking and hard living lifestyle may have contributed to her weakened immune system, making her more susceptible to infections like pneumonia. Calamity Jane's death serves as a poignant reminder of the harsh realities of life in the Wild West. While we often romanticize this era for its tales of courage and adventure, it was a time of rugged living conditions, limited access to health care, and the constant threat of illness and injury. From a modern perspective, her death also highlights the importance of health care and the advancements made in medicine over the years. In today's world, pneumonia is a treatable and often preventable illness through vaccines and antibiotics. Calamity Jane's fate reminds us to appreciate the progress we've made in healthcare and to take our own health seriously. So, as we remember Calamity Jane for her fearless spirit and remarkable life, let's also reflect on the fact that even the toughest individuals of the Wild West were not immune to the very real and often mundane threats that life can pose, such as pneumonia. Her legacy lives on, not only in the stories of her adventures, but also as a testament to the fragility of human life in the face of common diseases. Number 4. Jesse James Jesse James, the infamous Wild West outlaw, met his end when he was shot in the back by a fellow gang member, Robert Ford, in 1882. It was a shocking act of betrayal that brought an end to Jesse's life of crime. Jesse had been on the run, constantly dodging the law and seeking refuge with his gang. Robert Ford, a close friend and member of the gang, had secretly struck a deal with the authorities to capture Jesse. On a fateful morning in April 1882, Jesse was at his home in St. Joseph, Missouri, planning his next criminal endeavor. Unbeknownst to him, Ford had made a deal to bring him to justice. As Jesse stood on a chair to adjust a picture on the wall, he turned his back to Ford, who seized the opportunity and fired a single fatal shot into the back of Jesse's head. Jesse James fell to the ground, ending his infamous career as an outlaw. Robert Ford's actions were met with mixed reactions. Some saw him as a hero who had eliminated a dangerous criminal, while others viewed him as a traitor who had betrayed his friend for personal gain. The circumstances surrounding Jesse James's death have been a subject of debate and controversy. Some believed Ford acted out of self-defense and to claim the reward on Jesse's head, while others suspected more complex motives, including a desire for fame. Number 5. Doc Holliday Doc Holliday the legendary figure of the Wild West, met a fate that diverged from the typical violent showdowns of his era. In 1887, he succumbed to tuberculosis, a disease that claimed numerous lives in the 19th century. During the 1800s, tuberculosis was a major health concern in the United States. It was highly contagious and primarily attacked the lungs, causing symptoms like coughing, fever, weight loss, and fatigue. At the time, there were no effective treatments and sanatoriums were among the few resources available for patients. Doc Holliday was diagnosed with tuberculosis in the early 1870s, likely contracted from a patient during his time as a dentist. As the disease progressed, his health deteriorated, marked by chronic coughing fits and difficulty breathing. However, rather than succumbing to despair, Holiday embraced the lawlessness of the Wild West, taking up gambling and eventually becoming a notorious gunfighter. By 1887, his health had deteriorated significantly. He sought refuge in the drier climate of Colorado, but found no remedy. Bedridden for most of his final days, he took his last breath on November 8, 1887 at the age of 36. His death certificate listed pathysis, an old term for tuberculosis, as the cause of death. 
Doc Holliday's life and death humanized the legends of the Wild West, showing that even the most fearless gunslingers were vulnerable to a silent and insidious killer. His story serves as a poignant reminder that, in the face of adversity, some battles are fought quietly within the confines of one's own body, and not all are won.